What are some cool synthetic organisms that you you think about, you dream about? When you think about embodied mind, what do you imagine? What do you hope to build? Yeah, on a practical level, what I really hope to do is to gain enough of an understanding of the embodied intelligence of the organs and tissues such that we can achieve a radically different regenerative medicine so that we can say, basically, and I, th I think about it as, um, uh, you know, in, in terms of like, okay, can you, what's the, what's the, uh, uh, what's the goal, uh, kind of, uh, end, end, end game for this whole thing to, to, to me, the end game is something that you would call an anatomical compiler. So the idea is you would sit down in front of the computer and you would draw the, the body or the organ that you wanted. Not, not molecular details, but like, here, this is what I want. I want a six legged, uh, you know, frog with a propeller on top, or I want, I want a heart that looks like this, or I want a leg that looks like this. Mm -hmm. And what it would do if we knew what we were doing is put out, uh, it, it could convert that anatomical description into a set of stimuli that would have to be given to cells to convince them to build exactly that thing. Right. I probably won't live to see it, but I think it's achievable. And I think what that, if, if we can have that, then that is basically the solution to all of medicine except for infectious disease. So birth defects, right? Traumatic injury, cancer, aging, degenerative disease. If we knew how to tell cells what to build, all of those things go away. So those things go away and the um, uh, positive uh, feedback spiral of economic costs where all of the advances are increasingly more heroic and expensive interventions of a sinking ship when you're like 90 and, 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 and so on, right? All of that goes away because basically instead of trying to fix you up as you, as you degrade, you, you, um, you progressively regenerate, you know, you, you apply the regenerative medicine early before things degrade. So I think that that'll have massive economic impacts over what we're trying to do now, which is not at all, you know, sustainable. And, uh, and that, that's what I hope. I hope that, I hope that we get, to, so, so to me, yes, the xenobots will be doing useful things, uh, cleaning up the environment, cleaning out, you know, your, or, you know, your joints and all that kind of stuff. But more important than that, I think we can use these uh, synthetic systems to try to understand, to, 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 to develop a science of detecting and manipulating the goals of collective intelligences of cells, specifically for regenerative medicine. And then sort of beyond that, if we, you know, sort of think further beyond that, what I hope is that kind of like what you said, all of this drives a reconsideration of how we formulate um, ethical norms. Because this old school, so 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 in the olden days, what you could do is, if you, you were confronted with something new, you, so you, could, so you could tap on it, right? And if you heard a metallic clanging sound, you'd said, ah, fine, right? So you could conclude it was made in a factory, I could take yeah. it apart, I can do whatever, right? If you did that and you got you know, sort of a squishy uh, kind of warm uh, sensation, you'd say, ah, I need to be you know, more or less nice to it mm -hmm. and whatever. That's not going to be feasible. It was never really feasible, but it was good enough because we didn't have any, we, we didn't know any better. That needs to go. And I think that uh, by by breaking down those artificial barriers, someday we can try to build a uh, a system of, of of ethical norms that does not rely on these completely contingent facts of, of of our earthly history, but on something much much deeper that you know really um, takes takes agency and 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 uh, the capacity to suffer and all that takes that seriously. The capacity to suffer and, and the deep questions I would ask of a system is: Can I eat it and can I have sex with it? Um, which is the, the two fundamental tests of, again, the human condition. Uh, so I can basically do what Dali does that's in the, in, in the physical space. So print out like a 3D print Pepe the Frog with a propeller head, propeller hat, uh, is the, is the dream. Well, I want to, <laughs> yes and no. I mean, I want to get away from the 3D printing thing because that will be available for some things much earlier. I mean, we can already do bladders and ears and things like that because it's micro level control, right? When you 3D print, you are in charge of where every cell goes. And for some things that, you know, for, for like this thing, they had that, I think 20 years ago, or maybe earlier than that, you could do that. So yeah, I would like to emphasize the Dali part where you provide a few words yeah. and it generates a painting. Mm -hmm. So here you say, I want a frog with these features and then it would go direct a complex biological system to construct something like that. Yeah, the main magic would be, I mean, I think from, from looking at Dali and so on, it looks like the first part is kind of solved now where you go from, from the words to the image, like that seems more or less solved. 
the next step is really hard. This is what keeps uh, things like CRISPR and, and genomic editing and so on. It's, it, it, this is what limits all the ex- uh, 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 impacts for, for generative medicine. Because going back to, okay, this is the knee joint that I want, or this is the eye that I want. Now, what genes do I edit to make that happen, right? Going back in that direction is really hard. So instead of that, it's going to be, okay, I understand how to motivate cells to build particular structures. Can I rewrite the memory of what they think they're supposed to be building such that then I can, you know, take my hands off the wheel and let them let them do their thing? So some of that is experiment, but some of that maybe AI can help too. Oh, yeah. Just like with protein yeah. folding, this is exactly the problem that protein folding uh, in, in, in the most simple uh, medium tried and has solved with alpha fold, which is how does the sequence of letters result in this yeah. th- three dimensional shape? And you have to, um, I guess it didn't solve it because you have to, if you say, I want this shape, how do I then have a sequence of letters? Yeah. The reverse engineering step is really tricky. It is. I, th- I think, I think where, where, and, and we're doing some of this now is, is to uh, use AI to try and uh, build actionable models of the intelligence of the cellular collectives. So try to help us help us gain models that that that. Um, and and we we've had some success in this. So we we did something like this for um uh, for you know, for repairing uh, birth defects of the brain in frog. We've done some of this for um, normalizing melanoma, uh, where you can really start to use AI to make models of how would I impact this thing if I wanted to, given all the complexities, right? And, and, and given all the, uh, the, the, the controls that, that it, that it knows how to do.